Good afternoon. Dear colleagues, in the next few minutes, I will talk about the pros and cons of uh, white blood cell imaging in baleful hips as compared to other nuclear medicine imaging modalities. In particular, white blood cell scan uh, as compared to anti-granulocyte monoclonal antibodies and uh, fluoridosis glucose. Here you can see the whole body scan of uh, a patient injected with white blood cells at 24 hours, a patient injected with a monoclonal antibody fragment and leukoscan at 24 hours, and a patient injected uh, with the fluoridosis glucose, FDG, at one hour post-injection. If you look at the distribution uh, in the white blood cells, we have more uptake in the spleen and bone marrow than liver. For the antibody peptide, we have more uptake in the uh, liver and kidneys and bone marrow. And for the FDG, of course, we have an optimal biodistribution that would suggest uh, the use of FDG as a standard method for imaging infection. However, we learn more than uh, biodistribution. We learn about looking at the kinetics of images. And in particular, we know that the accumulation of radiolabel white blood cells in infection sites follows a dynamic process. Once they are injected in vivo, the radiolabel cells go to the bone marrow quite quickly and stays over time in the bone marrow. Whereas in infected area, depending on the chemotactic attraction induced by the bacteria present in the infection, the accumulation over time may increase sharply or in the subacute or chronic infection may increase slowly, but still they increase between the injection time and the 20 hour image. Therefore, if we acquire three sets of images or at least two sets of images between 3-4 hours and 20 hours, we can follow the dif different pattern of distribution of uh, white blood cells amongst bone marrow, acute infections and inflammatory sterile inflammatory reactions. In this slide, you can see, in, as it appears, a patient with a suspected hip infection injected with radiolabel white blood cells labeled with technetium, 99 HMPAO. And in particular, we can notice an accumulation of radiolabel cells in the tip of the prosthesis and at the neck of the prosthesis at four hours post injection. And after 20 hours, the um, uptake in the tip decreases, whereas the uptake in the neck of the prosthesis increases. Therefore, we can easily learn that uh, those activity that decreases with time are sterile inflammatory reactions and the sites where the cells increase with time is a sign of uh, infection. In summary, the acquisition should be done at early time points, 30 minutes, just to evaluate the blood flow, at delayed time point at 3-4 hours after injection, at 20-24 hours late acquisition. But not only this is important, but also that the image after acquisition should be displayed in total counts and not in percentage of the maximum pixel and using the same intensity scale. In this way, we can fully appreciate any significant increase or decrease of radioactivity with time. If we want to better study the location of the uptake, we have to acquire SPECT or SPECT-CT um, images, and we can also calculate the lesion to reference uh, ratios if we want to have a semi-quantitative uh, uh, parameters of evaluation of the uh, uptake in the area. As far as uh, anti-granulocytes antibodies, uh, we have two different uh, antibodies commercially available. One uh, called Sintimun, uh, commercialized by IBA in Europe at least, 
is a wool immunoglobulin G. The second is a FAB fragment, uh, FB, uh, FAB1 primus fragment, and it's called the Leucoscan and commercialized by Immunomedics. Uh, they have a different uh, biodistribution, and uh, the different biodistribution is demonstrated, as you can see, by a different uh, plasma kinetics. Uh, this study in, in, in the late 90s uh, demonstrates that uh, immunoglobulin G, they have a, a slow decrease of activity during time in the blood, whereas the uh, FAG fragments are rapidly removed from the circulation. But not only they have a different clearance, uh, they also have a different metabolism. And uh, the total immunoglobulin are uh, present as an intact immunoglobulin after up to 24 hours after the injection, whereas the fragments are rapidly degraded and after four hours, as much as 50% of the antibody is uh, degraded or uh, uh, present in an aggregate form. As a consequence of this, the uptake into the infected bone is different over time for the two monoclonal antibodies. For the total IgG, we can observe an increase between one and four hours and a further significant increase between four and 24 hours in all cases of osteomyelitis. On the contrary, the FAB primus fragment shows an increase between one and four hours and a decrease of activity between four and 24 hours. Therefore, the imaging strategy should be different if we use total IgG or FAB fragments and also the interpretation criteria. In particular, for the leucoscan FAB fragment, the correct interpretation requires that images are acquired only at four hours, at one and four hours, no more than four hours post injection. And often they need to be associated with a nanocolloid scan to uh, rule out the possibility of an expanded bone marrow. As far as the symptom on the total IgG is concerned, the correct interpretation of images requires that these are acquired at 4 and 20 hours post-injection, as we do for white blood cells, and often we need to associate this to a three-phase bone scan to avoid non-specific accumulation in heavily inflamed vascularized lesions. Let's talk about uh, FDG. FD, the problem of FDG is indeed the lack of a standardized uh, interpretation criteria. And over the years, uh, several different interpretation criteria have been proposed. Rainers proposed that uh, FDG, in order to show the presence of an infected prosthesis, should be present along the head, the neck, the, 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 the shelf of the prosthesis, and also in soft tissues. This was uh, argued by Palestro that showed very low sensitivity and specificity for whatever test was applied. Uh, Basu, uh, Chaco and Alavi proposed uh, different uh, criteria and in particular uh, for the hip, the presence of uh, uh, an accumulation only on the, on the shaft of the prosthesis, but not on the neck or the head or the tip of the prosthesis. And these criteria have been uh, well summarized by a recent review of uh, Dr. Verbern 
in which he showed that if we have a method, we select a method with a high sensitivity, we pay on the specificity. If we have a very high specificity, we pay on the sensitivity. And the best seems to be the uptake of FDG on the bone prosthesis interf uh, interface plus soft tissue infection plus also some activity in the head or in the neck of the prosthesis that shows 81% sensitivity and cumulated 96% specificity with a closed range of confidence intervals. However, there are some exemptions in, in, in this case. For example, we have a, a focal uptake on the shaft. We have some activity in the neck uh, and the tip of the prosthesis, uh, maybe something also diffusing uh, along the soft tissue, but the patient was operated, uh, the prosthesis removed, and it appeared to be negative at microbiology of multiple biopsies in the region. Therefore, probably the interpretation criteria should also take in consideration the time at which the FDG is performed after surgical application implant of the prosthesis in order to reduce false positivity. We studied uh, 20 patients and the study is still ongoing in Rome uh, with uh, three different methodologies with white blood cell scan, Shintimun, total IgG monoclonal antibody and FDG PET together with X-ray and CT scan. And uh, despite there is uh, no significant difference between white blood cell scan and Shintimun, you see the diagnostic accuracy is always uh, uh, very Compa comparable and over 90%. Uh, in case of uh, PETs with the FDG, regardless the method of uh, interpretation of an analysis, Palestro, Reynolds or Chaco, we found very low uh, the, uh, accuracy value. Uh, the same applies for the planar X-ray and the CT scans. These data were also presented in a meta-analysis a few years ago by Dr. Verbern again, in which he demonstrated that, that, that coupling the white blood cell scan, leukocyte scan, with bone marrow scintigraphy, we can obtain the best sensitivity and the best specificity of all other examinations in nuclear medicine including FDG PET. Therefore, uh, in the 2016, uh, at the uh, European Association of Nuclear Medicine, and in particular uh, on the, in the Committee of Inflammation and Infection that at that time was uh, chaired by myself, uh, we established a collaboration with the European Society of Bone and joint infections, the European Society of Clinical Microbiology and Infective Diseases, and the European Society of Radiology to define a common flowchart for imaging prosthetic joint infection. And these guidelines were published in, 19, in 2019 and in 2020. You can find them in, in the PubMed. Basically, the results is shown here. These guidelines, uh, these, these multi-society uh, guidelines, show that the standard initial workup includes blood cultures, of course, some uh, uh, serological markers such as CRP, ESR, or white blood cell count, X-ray, and if possible, analysis of aspirate from sinus tract or from uh, uh, US guided uh, um, aspiration. If the suspicion persists or diagnosis has not yet been reached by the aspiration, 
we should consider uh, a biopsy and if the biopsy is not possible to be performed we have to move to advanced imaging tests this advanced imaging test includes nuclear medicine ct scan magnetic resonance imaging however among these three the highest uh, diagnostic accuracy is uh, for the nuclear medicine modalities as agreed and we have several nuclear medicine modalities the flow chart is shown here we suggest to divide patients according to time from implant if the implant in the hip is before three years we can start before three years uh, or two years sorry be within two years from implant we can start with a white blood cell scan and eventually coupled with uh, uh, bone marrow scintigraphy instead if we have more than two years from implant we can sh we can start with a f uh, with a three phase bone scan or with an fdg scan followed by other examination depending on the results but basically what is really relevant is to uh, divide patients according to time from implant and finally recently together with the world association against infection in orthopedics and trauma the newborn wyatt society we published another consensus statement which i think is very important because for the first time we clearly defined which are the rule out tests and therefore those that influence the sensitivity of the diagnosis that includes possibly a bone scan uh, and other parameters and which are the tests the ruling tests which are essential for the specificity of the diagnosis that includes radio labeled uh, leukocyte scintigraphy uh, possibly combined with bone marrow scan so this is for the first time is clear and there should be no doubt in performing this test according to the procedural guidelines published by ENM uh, for image acquisition and interpretation. So in conclusion, I have a few points to take home. The bone scan is almost useless before two years after implant in the hip and after this period it has a very high sensitivity and therefore it can be used as a rule out test rule in test sorry fdg and mri have low accuracy and lower than white blood cell scan and white blood cell scan is very important to be acquired in the correct way using a, a three or two times images corrected for isotope decay and displayed with the same total count scale in doubtful cases we can use semi-quantitative analysis and if still doubtful we can perform nanocolloid scan for 20 minutes after the injection of uh, the colloid spec ct improves the evaluation of site or the extent of the infection but usually in the hip prosthesis are not necessary for the diagnosis itself thank you very much for your attention